Hi, welcome to EV Blog Breaking News. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, straight off the teletype. Uh, we've got a battery fire, a Tesla battery fire. Check it out. This comes from just tweeted from Seven News. Look at this. Ah, uh, doesn't look good. Um, called the Victoria Big Battery. It's in Morrible, uh, in Victoria, and it's supposed to be uh, like the well, one of the largest uh, Tesla battery. Uh, storage facilities in the world, I believe, um, and twice as big as our previous biggest one here in Australia, which was the Hornsdale Power Reserve. Might have a look at that in a minute, but um, yeah, it's on fire. Toxic smoke is a big thing, and they've issued tox toxic smoke uh, warnings because you don't want to breathe this stuff in. And oh, look, it's spread to this one over here as well. Well, it's got like char in, and there's something that's all bent out of shape there. Is that like there's the heat doing that or whatever, but yeah, obviously it started in uh, one of the cells in here and it's just engulfed these packs because they come as these uh, units here. Now this is a 450 megawatt hour facility, which is absolutely enormous, 300 watts, watts, 300 megawatts uh, peak power capability, 450 megawatt hours. Now it's not actually finished yet, um, I believe like they're just in the process of testing it at the moment and well an aerial photo of it this comes from the ABC although I guess the ABC choppers in the air there and yeah, as you can see like it's in big farmland I guess the farmer like whoever owned uh, this land probably sold it to him or rented it to him you probably want to rent you don't want to sell it you want to rent it to him anyway um, yeah you can see that it's this one over in the corner it looks like they got more over here under construction here. This is why it wasn't fully online yet. Apparently it was discontinued from the grid. So I'm not sure what it was, yeah, what it was doing. Do they even have like internal loads and things? Like surely they'd have some sort of, uh, like in the boxes next to them, might have like a dummy load they can do like discharge cycles into. I don't know. If you know details, uh, leave it in the comments down below. But yeah, it certainly was not finished yet. And uh, it's obviously nearby to these uh, power lines here. So, yep, it's Kamagatsa and the magic smoke has escaped. But as Elon said, everything's better with fire. Now, this raises a couple of interesting questions like why would, you know, because obviously uh, battery systems like this, they're exothermic, right? Which means that once they catch on fire, they're self-fulfilling, they're self-perpetuating, right? The fire will just keep going. The energy will just feed upon itself. And, you know, it's lithium battery fires are serious business. They're practically impossible to stop once you uh, start them. The only way to do that is to, like, isolate individual um, cells, you know, physical barrier or a space barrier. And given all this land they've got, you've got to actually question why do they have them so close together like this. I mean, you you see it in um, here's here's the company that actually um, it is in charge. Like they own this system. They bought it from Tesla. They're installed. I don't believe Tesla actually install these systems. Please correct me if I'm wrong down below. But anyway, uh, Neo N, I guess is how you pronounce that. They actually run um, lots and lots of like renewable solar wind power storage. They've got like seven power plants here, 33 wind power, 58 um, solar plants and stuff like that. And you can have a look. This is their Victorian big battery. So this is another look. It looks like they have a big substation over here and this is when early on it was so the fires like down here somewhere and this one's still under construction as we saw from the uh, photo before and these ones uh, all this stuff here we saw that's um, actually to connect it into the grid and stuff i believe so yeah it's a big daddy 450 megawatt hours um absolutely enormous and before that yeah it was the hornsdale the biggest one here was the hornsdale one Hornsdale Power Reserve, uh, they don't have any good photos of that. And just look, the fire's just like ripping into the ones next to it. And they're like, like what is there, what, like a foot of gap there between them? So it's, I'm, I'm not sure how you can expect these to actually um, stop spreading. And this is supposed to be a photo of it under construction, although they're different, because you'll notice that there's no fans on top of those. So... Um, yeah, why there's fans on top of these ones, as you can see, like each, uh, each unit there, like has this big fan, what looks like a fan on the 
back of the thing. So yeah, are these, are the design of these ones any different? I don't know, any commercial Tesla battery pack experts out there um, able to tell us what the uh, deal is or do Tesla just supply the the uh, rack units themselves, which can, which we can have a look at. Um, so yeah, l let's actually have a look at, here's inside one of these uh, containers. So you can see, I'm not sure what capacity each one is, but you can see that they're individual slabs here. And of course these would be uh, like, a, probably uh, 2170 uh, cells in there, like the standard Tesla cells from their Gigafactory. And then you've got uh, water pumped uh, liquid um, cooling up here like this, thermal management. And I guess you can slide, these are in, in racks and you can slide them in and out. And they've got, uh, this is where they do cell monitoring and protection and all that uh, sort of jazz. And they uh, boast about that. So they boast that uh, the individual battery packs like that, they can slide out. They boast about how you know, hundreds of embedded sensors, power pack offers unparalleled performance, safety and reliability. And temperature, thermal control system, internal liquid cooling and heating system allows pinpoint temperature control within a power pack, a dual coolant and refrigerant loop system. But the, see, the problem is, and they're supposed to be weatherproof, like, um, yes, yeah, so I don't know what the fan on the top's doing, because um, it looks like some of them need it and some don't, I don't know. Anyway, the whole idea, like each one of those might have like a thousand cells in it or something. Each one of those little packs might have like a thousand cells in it. And when you've got that many, you're just like, <laughs> you're bound to get a failure somewhere along the line. So it's not, I'm not going to say it's not surprising, but you know, it's like <laughs> when you've got that many cells in there and when potentially... Um, because they're exothermic, if one of them develops an internal fault that heats up, then, well, I'm not sure about the internal construction and how that, you know, uh, that energy will be dissipated. Sure, like, you know, they can cut the load off to it and everything else, which is fine and dandy, but because they're exothermic, that's not going to do anything. It's not the load causing the uh, problem. It's internal to the cell itself. So internal to the physical construction, and then that spreads to the next cell. It heats up and... Before you know it, you've come a gutsa. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to be in the uh, high volume <laughs> battery pack business like this. My own car, my own Hyundai Ionic uh, car has been recalled. Well, they recalled them all worldwide because like eight of them caught on fire or something. It's like, you know, it's like sheer numbers. It's, it's going to eventually happen unless you use a non exothermic battery technology. So. Don't know who this Chris Vanderstock. Thank you very much. Here we go. Got some aerial footage, but under construction. Having an area smaller than the football oval at Geelong's GMHBA Stadium. Smaller than stadium. the football oval. Why? This site is located 13 kilometres northwest of Geelong and still very much a construction site, with most groundwork done. Now, as I said, with the amount of land they've got, you've got a question like, why? Would you put them this close together? Or at least, like, you know, even if you constructed, like, just a brick wall around each one or something that would just, like, individually contain each, um, you know, like, pod, I guess, what is what are one of these things, you know, this whole thing, um, obviously. Or, or maybe, like, a double one or something like that. Or, is, yeah, it looks like there's one of these controllery or something thing or interface uh, boxes, junction boxes or whatever for each one of these. I'm not sure if you know what they're doing. Leave it in the comments down below. But yeah, why can't you put like just a big wall that's slightly taller than the whole thing like be be between these to stop the fire spreading? Now, I, this is breaking news, so I don't know how damaged it's going to be. But obviously this one over here is going to that. That looks damaged. The Metal looks like it's uh, just warped and everything there. And this one's completely gone. I'd be surprised if it doesn't spread a bit. Hopefully it doesn't spread further, but it could potentially spread to that one there. Um, you know, it's given the, the prevailing winds and uh, stuff like that are going to um, cause the issue there. But uh, yeah, like, why wouldn't you just spread them out a bit more? Have they done any calculations or testing as to, like, you know, how close these things should be? together because you know possibly if you just put a wall around it or something or if you had a greater gap of course if you doubled the distance do you like you know halve the you know, get a quarter of the heat <laughs> I don't know, fire experts down below, fireys, I'm sure I got some in my audience, please leave it down below, but yeah, um, when you pack them so close together, and that's, uh, you see in all the news reports that that is their main fear, is that it's going to spread 
to the other packs. And not only is that a cost impact, but well, you know, you don't want the whole place going up. Yeah, and producing even more um, toxic smoke that's going to spread to local communities and things like that. That's very, very bad. So, yeah, I don't know. why. I, obviously, it's cost. Once again, I don't think it's actually Tesla who actually installed this. this they just supplied the systems and help you know, manage the installation and stuff like that. But it would it would be the owners who would, you know, make make the call on how close to put them together, what, you know, whether or not you physically um, separate them or put a wall between them or something like that. Because this is common in data centers. My own EEV log data center, for example, the golden rule is in a data center, you do not put your generator, your backup generator, you put that in a physically separate concrete room to the data servers. And that wasn't done in the case of the EV blog server. So when the generator caught on fire, yeah, oops. It, well, they had to like sprinkle the whole uh, room and the whole data center just flooded. So it was it was the water that damaged the servers. But the, the concept is, is the same, that you physically keep these separate in a separate contained room. And they these are just, I don't know, they figure they're out in the air. She'll be right. No worries. Okay, so it's not like a load thing. Who knows what... I'm sure there'll be a huge, well, no, but technically a private company owns them. Well, I think they're private. Um, there might be a public company, but anyway, basically a private company owns uh, this thing. So I, you know, it's not being paid by our tax dollars, I believe, like the um, energy utilities. They just like, you know, hire these uh, storage units. So I'm sure there's big money in the Victoria big battery. And yeah, they just rent out the storage. It's cheaper than like on other online types of storage. And that brings me to the Hornsdale Power Reserve. I'll mention that a bit briefly. There it is, the Hornsdale Power Reserve. Um, that was Australia's biggest one. And that made all the news a couple of years back when Elon uh, famously tweeted out that if we don't deliver this thing in like, I don't know, 90 days or something, it's free. And sure enough, they actually delivered the packs and it wasn't free. They had to pay for it. And um, so uh, this is in um, South Australia when South Australia had the gigantic cascading blackouts and that was caused by you know, many things. Anyway, let's not go there. But um, they have actually released... I was going to do a video on this and I never got around to it because it would be quite a complicated one to do it justice. But it turns out this thing paid for itself within 12 months and then was making profit hand over fist. It was making money like there's no tomorrow. And it basically became this big cash cow because they were just saving the money because the utilities had to rent these online... Uh, I believe they were natural gas uh, ones or diesel backup um, diesel generators or whatever um, that would spin up when they when they needed them to for various um, circumstances on the uh, grid and they were renting you know they they were paying like a like a monthly or a yearly rental thing and that's where they saved the money these things when you purchase this and then once you've amortized the cost over a year or two it you know it's then it's money for jam after that so yeah apparently the hornsdale power reserve um which was the biggest one at the time in the world i believe and it was a big deal and it was a huge success so they were hoping and that was the same company so they were hoping to replicate the uh success of that with um this new one they thought oh this is a cash cow we'll build another we'll keep building those thank you very much you know you've got to be a huge company to invest the uh cash the fiat into actually um, having these and buying these things because they buy these. They're an asset and then they rent them out to the utility companies at a very hefty profit. So yeah, I reckon the owner will be uh, checking their warranty. <laughs> Imagine the fine print in the warranty for this thing. Is it like the owner's fault because they installed it without adequate protection to spread from, you know, to the other ones. Like Tesla are almost certainly are responsible for like the one rack, I would guess. But then what about the rack next to it? What about this one on this side of it here? What about like there or do they supply the do they warranty the whole pod or the whole bank? like that um and was like and what happened in like this bank assuming that this one's damaged and has to be replaced who's gonna you know who has to pony up the money for that well insurance i don't know um but uh, yeah anyway anyone know exactly how many cells in a 450 megawatt hour? you can run the numbers 
I'll leave that to those playing along at home for 450 megawatt hours. How many cells in this entire installation and calculate the odds of just one of them, you know, releasing the magic smoke, going exothermic and, well, taking out the whole lot. So, yeah, like who's responsible if the whole thing catches on fire? At what point is your insurance company going to go, nah, you're, you, you didn't install walls around these, so we're, we're only going to pay for the one bank or something like that. And you're just, nah, you're screwed on the rest of them or something like that. So insurance-wise, I'm sure they're checking every dotted I and every crossed T in there. And <laughs> I'm sure they'll save most of it. But yeah, look at that. Oh, that, that poor bastard there. Yep. <laughs> That's a roasted marshmallow. Yeah.